This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Well, killing that nasty rebel engine felt wonderful. I couldn't really contain what huge excitement I would have had if this other guy didn't ruin it for me. However, I did know to something else. The other engine who I was about to kill next was Ben. However, I looked in the berth on the other side of Thomas, only to find that it was empty. Could someone have possibly let him out when I was knocked out? Could it have been that evil witch that poisoned me? Could it have been one of my own soldiers? Oh mm. well. Either way, I'm gonna find it, pay the price when I find out. As I write this, I could feel my new adversary smiling as he looked over my shoulder. He was reading out aloud what I was writing with his ugly, disgusting fat lips. Hey, wait a minute, that's not very nice! You don't like what I write, then shut up about it. I'm but a man who writes words of the prophets, speaks from the mouth of a king, and performs the actions spoken of me by the god. Then the imposter spoke once more. Topham, why are you such an angry person? I ignored him, and I asked him, How do I kill you? Any other previous attempts have clearly failed. There must be a way. He spoke once more. Topham, still don't understand, do you? You can't kill me. I've become a part of you now. However, there are only two ways you can get me to leave. First option, you can reform and change your ways for the better. Or the second, you die. So what you're telling me is you're a bloody parasite? Well, I wouldn't call it that. More of a vivid hallucination who would never leave with you. He looked down at my folder my God previously gave me. He stared intensely into my eyes and asked the question I hoped he would not ask. What is Project E2? None of your business. What kind of sick plan are you hiding, Topham? I shrugged him off. My plans are none of your concern. I will say this, however. Project E2 is my fail-safe plan in case the rebels got lucky. My ultimate weapon. But we defeated the rebels, and Project E2 was shelved. But now, it is time. I was cut off by a man with dark grey hair. He spoke. Good morning, my emperor. We've gotten the location of the rebel outpost. Splendid. And what about the rebel soldier? <sighs> Sir, he did not survive. But, most importantly, my mind ripper works. Mr. Ryan Ratchback, don't get too far ahead of yourself. Your machine still kills its victims. We need them to live a little bit longer, so we can torture them more. Where is this location you speak of? Per Coronan, sir. Good. Well done, Ryan. Go now and get another rebel, and improve your machine. I want it working perfectly. Right away, my Emperor. Sure, Jobham, you have a mind, Ripper. How many innocent people are you going to kill with that thing? 
Oh, believe me, I'd rather drill you out of my head before anything else happens. I screamed as I walked out the door. As I walked across the platform, I could see my trusty number one being ready by none other than General Keith Wickham of the Daily Report. He and Thomas have been my most trusted general since the beginning of my takeover, which was so long ago. Keith, about the change of plans, we are going to Kirk Ronan to get the rebels all at that location. We got them cornered. That sounds like fun, sir. Yes, sir. We are all ready to go. Good. You will be my fireman. I would like to be Thomas's driver. It's been a while. I missed you, my emperor. I missed you too, Thomas. As we traveled down the line towards Kirk Roden, Keith asked me, What is our plan when we get there? Just open fire and kill everyone? Pretty much, Keith. However, there is one rebel I need more than the rest. If he is over there, try not to hit him. <laughs> Don't worry, Keith. I have my laser miniguns. That deaths will be quick. You're right, Thomas. We will get those rebels. We're all laughing and having fun, enjoying the trip like old times. I was surprised that other hat gave me a moment of peace, but that was cut short by irritating beeping noise that would not go away. Where's that noise coming from, Keith? I don't see anything. Um, sir, is it getting hot or is it just me? I looked at Chumbish's gauge and it showed there was no water in the tank. Other had appeared as he was leaning on the side of Thomas's cab, smirking. This is getting interesting, he said as he took a sip of his fake glass of wine. Suddenly, I put the pieces together and turned to Keith. What have you done? What must be done? Time to die, fat hat! I went for my gun. I heard a click of a button as Keith jumped out of Thomas. Then, the Hat was laughing, staring at me, and said, Morning, Chopper. Have a nice jet nap. Book her off! As I got out of the ditch, I noticed the horrible scene that awaited me. Chumash, my beloved engine, was on fire. The screams pierced the air like a plague. Keith was nowhere to be found. And I radioed for help. The emergency services arrived hastily at my call and began spraying Thomas with water to put the fire out. Alright men, listen up. Search the area for any and all rebels. Kill every single one you find. The match it is. You know who. Then came the news. Also, Keith Wickham is not among our ranks anymore. His betrayal of our glorious empire shall not go unpunished and shall not be forgotten. Should you find him, shoot him where he stands. After they put the fire out, I did a close inspection of Thomas. He was badly burned all over, his cab destroyed. But somehow he managed to survive. As I noticed him trying to move one eye, I spoke to a nearby soldier. Hey, you, what's your name? Fred, sir. Right. I have a very important mission for you, Fred. Radio back to Timoth and notify the mechanics. Then ride into the town and get Gordon over here with a flatbed and a crane. I want the best care for Thomas and I want him to be repaired and back in service as soon as possible. Understood? Yes, sir. It shall be done. I will not let you down. Just as we were talking, James pulled up with General John Green. The General spoke up. Sir? We have found Charlie Sam. He's held up at the signal box nearby with a couple of hostages. He's going to kill our friends. I want Charlie Sand captured alive. He holds the key to our final victory over the rebels. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Yes, sir. We left in James. The overbearing presence started speaking once more. Stephen, do the right thing. Let Charlie go. 
Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Keep quiet. It did not take us long at all to get to the signal hut. As we arrived, I noticed my shoulders had completely surrounded the signal box. We've got you now, Charlie. It's over, Charlie. Exit the signal box with your hands over your head. We are going to give you a chance to live. Do not make this difficult. He spoke in a voice I haven't heard in years. Hello, Stephen. I will not be surrendering to you or anyone else. Come any closer, and you and your men will meet a tragic end. I got out of the radio, and I told my soldiers to move in on the signal box. Your time is up. Say goodbye to the hostages. As I got close, however, missiles came out of nowhere and hit the signal box, instantly killing 20 of my soldiers. And most likely, Charlie's hand. I looked up at the signal box. The signal box was still burning. Charred remains everywhere. I heard a voice from within the skies. Hey there, fat hat. Good luck getting information out of Charlie now. Cave! Even if it is the last thing I do, I shall see to it that you are executed! What a piece of garbage! This is horrible. General Green, I want you to take command and get this situation under control here. Find Charlie as well. I want it confirmed if he is really dead. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I left with James as I heard the sound of the sirens and fire trucks run. It was good to be back in my office at Tidmus Station. My assistant walked up to me. I have information for you, my Emperor. Can you remind me what your name is, good sir? My name is Bryce Williamson, sir. So, speak up. What's the news? Sir, Thomas is in stable condition, but his injuries were life-threatening. He will take time to recover, at least he will live. Also, we have recovered what's left of Charlie Sands' body, which is just burnt remains. Well, it's good to hear that Thomas is still with us. Bryce... Your orders are to tell Ryan Rutschback to drop Project Mind Ripper. You must also tell him to get Project E2 ready for battle. I want everyone, and I mean everyone, keeping an eye out for General Keith Wickham, as he has become the most wanted man on the island of Shoko. I want him dead or alive. Nobody gets away with betraying. Nobody! Other hats spoke. You will fail. Because justice always wins. Justice shall be served on a silver platter. We shall restore order. You and I both, sir. You can count on me. You have a wonderful rest of your evening. You left my office, I sighed. Well, one annoying day with you, Dale. God knows how many more to go. You do know you can give in right. Good night, Cretan. Wait! Who's that on the television? I looked at the television to see a man in blue. I yelled out, Rebel scum! Where is this pirate broadcast coming from? Shut up! I'm trying to hear what are you saying. I resisted throwing something at him as I positioned myself to hear what this rebel was yapping on about. Hello, Emperor. My name is General Gavin Fawkes, and I am part of a group that wishes to destroy you by any means necessary. You see, you won. There is no more rebellion. You killed them all, and their leader, Charlie Sand. We are not the rebels. We are Sodor's true saviors. We will do whatever it takes to destroy your empire, and you along with it. We are the Sudrian Brotherhood. There's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to run. We are coming.
it's been a while since I wore this suit. Oh, I've missed this one so much you wouldn't even understand. It's time to reintroduce this suit to the world. 